Great, thanks. If you're just coming in, pick one of these um, five tables that have someone at them, and that will help us in our first little activity. So does everybody have an index card? The card you have may or may not have a sticker on it, and that doesn't matter right now. So here's what I would like you to do. As a group with the people at your table, I want you to determine one thing that everyone at your table has in common. Be creative. So for example, we all woke up by 7 a.m. this morning, or we all drive a Toyota, or whatever you want. So something that your group all has in common, and you can write it down on your note card if you would like, or not. Here's, here's step two. So first, something that everyone in your group has in common. And then I want you to find something that's unique to you that no one else at your table can claim. You, yeah, you can write them on your note card. So for example, maybe you're the only one at your table who can really say you're a true Aggie. Okay, does that make sense? So first, something your group all has in common and second, something that's unique to you. Okay, are you ready for the next step? So, raise your hand if you have the blue sticker at your table, the card with the blue sticker. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you to be the spokesman at your table. First, tell me what your group has in common, and then something that's unique to you. So Anna, we'll start with you. All right, well, first of all, I'm really glad you're here today, because it's the last session, and if I wasn't presenting, I'd be headed back to my office because I have 500 things to do, and I'm sure you guys do too. And it's kind of that afternoon slump time where you're just like, I don't want to sit anymore. So thanks for being here. I, I thought if I get 10 or more, that will be a success. So um, what I'd like to do today is model as much as possible, you know, some low tech ideas that I try in my classes. And, um, for my classes that I teach, some of them range are large enrollment, so 100 plus students in a in a classroom, and some are smaller, like um, 30 students or so. And so some of these ideas will work for a large class, and some work better in a small class. But I'm going to share um, 10 that you can do with index cards, but you can also uh, use other things too, like a post-it note, or you can use an app or electronic stuff, or there's lots of different ways to do the same thing. So here's um, one thing to write on the back of your card if you, if you wrote down what you have in common. Tell me why you're here today and what you hope to gain from this session. And, uh, and, then, and then we'll go from there. And by the way, I may or may not get through all 10, depending on time. And so somewhere on your table, there's a worksheet uh, that has an outline of all the ideas we're going to talk about and a, a description. And then on the back, there's kind of a visual example. And so hopefully, if we don't have time to get through all of them, then what's on that worksheet will help fill in the gaps. And, and uh, you're also welcome to email me for more information if you need. So here's kind of... Um, an outline of the of the ideas that we'll go through, and for most of the examples that I use here, I'm gonna I'm gonna be showing pictures from uh, a class that I teach called Nutrition During the Life Cycle, where we talk about nutrition needs at every stage of life, so infancy and childhood and adolescence and everything. So. If you see stuff in here about breastfeeding and everything else, it's just because it was specific to that class. But it can apply to a lot of different disciplines. So, so the quiz um, or quick response one is similar to what we just did, where uh, on a note card, you have a, a number, and that assigns students to a group or a table or a spot, and they, they become a group in this particular one, I, I used it for the first day of class, and I handed out a syllabus quiz. And they had access to the syllabus prior to that, and so they had a copy of the syllabus and the quiz, and as a group, they worked on their quiz. And there was, every student had a different color of note card. So 
Some had white, some had blue, some had green. And the color of their car determined what their job was in the group. So I said, I'm going to give you 20 minutes. And if you're the timekeeper person, you make sure you come back to class by this time. And if you're the runner, you come up and get all your materials at the front and take them to your group. And anyway, so that worked pretty good. Uh, the other thing is I had them write on the back something unique to them, something their group had in common. And then what they, uh, they finished the sentence of what a good teacher is so that I kind of knew what their expectations were for uh, a good teacher. And then they just turned in their note cards at the end. But also, I had them on their, on their syllabus quiz. The number of their card was the question that they started with. So if they, have, if they were in group 14, then they started on question 14. So if they didn't finish all the questions, then when we all came back together, I said, OK, group 14, what was the answer to your question? And then they all could get the answer that group 14 figured out and group 12 and group 2. So anyway, again, there's a, a lot of variations with that. But um, I use the note card, split them into groups, give them a job, and, uh, and get some feedback. So here's the second one, uh, the name flashcards. I got this idea from a colleague, actually, where um, the photo roster that you get works OK. But sometimes I cut it up, and I just paste their picture on an on a index card, and then I hand them out and have them respond to some questions like, you know, what's your major? or what lab number are you in, or whatever I want. And then I collect those, but then they become flashcards for me so I can get to know their names, but also something about them. And uh, anyway, it helps me get to know students faster. Uh, third idea, there's three versions of this, true, false. So one version, what I did is I, I printed false statements on a mailing label. And then I attach that mailing lib sticker to the top of a note card. And their job was to make that statement true using the resources that I gave them. So I gave them a, a position paper or a research paper. And their job was to read through the research paper and find out what the true statement was. In, in this case, I had a big group. So, so the color of the card matched up with the source they were supposed to look at. So if they had a green card, for example, they were supposed to look at the position paper. If they had a yellow card, they were supposed to look at another source. And also, I was trying to um, help them understand the, the AMA format that we use for research papers in our, in our discipline. And so if you had a, a blue card in this example, then I had a reference citation on there that had a mistake. And they were supposed to correct it using correct AMA style. So that was, uh, that was one version. A second version, I think there's a picture here, is that uh, I have a collection of cards with true or false statements. And then they have two envelopes. And so I, as a group, they work together to sort those cards. And they put all the cards that have a true statement in the true envelope and the ones with the false statement in the false envelope. Or you can give them three cards of different colors. And for every true statement that you read or say in class, then they hold up their card and that's true or false or not sure. And then you can kind of get a, a, a visual idea of where they're at. So it's kind of like iClicker, but except they're voting with a card. OK, here's a fourth one. And, and uh, there's two versions of this one. So Jigsaw. And the jigsaw idea basically means that you break something down into smaller pieces, and you let each group do a portion of that project. So uh, on this assignment, they were supposed to complete a worksheet um, about uh, preconception and common conditions during preconception and pregnancy. And so um, I, I split them into eight groups, and each group was supposed to become was supposed to become really familiar with one condition. So for example, you guys 
we're supposed to learn all about gestational diabetes, and you guys are supposed to learn all about hyperemesis gravidarum. And so you had about 10 minutes or so to read the information on the card and to uh, get really familiar with that condition. And then you mix everyone up so that uh, there's somebody in your new group that's a representative from each spot. And so on the back of all of their cards, they had a sticker with a color, and that was their new group that they would go to. So the red group, yellow group, green group. And then there was someone from each of those original eight groups in that, in that new set. And then together they filled in this worksheet, and they'd read the description of the condition on the worksheet, and the person would be like, oh, that was my group. I learned that diabetes, you have, this happened. So uh, that was one way that we broke that up. Um, another idea where it's kind of the reverse idea is where you're adding to it. So I call it add, add one more thing. So you start with, let, let's say they had the assignment to read a certain chapter the night before. And so uh, they're in groups and, you, and uh, everyone has a card and maybe at the top of their card they have a, a topic like this, this section of chapter one. And so they write down one thing that they learned from that section, and they pass it to their neighbor, and their neighbor adds one more thing about that topic. And the following person adds one more thing until they fill the card. And, and then again, you're just kind of breaking it up, but also trying to see um, what they've learned collectively. But it kind of holds them responsible because uh, they know that their classmates will be able to see their response, and so uh, it's motivation to, to learn. Are you doing okay? Am I going too fast? Okay. Here we go. Another thing is to d divide the group, and we've kind of talked about this already, but you can put a number on an index card to divide them up into teams, or I use colored stickers a lot, or colored index cards, or um, topics on a card. So, and that way, uh, you're dividing them. Here's another way that I divided them once where I put the topic on, on the, the note card and there were six topics. We were talking about reasons why kids refuse to eat and it's not always because they're being bad or naughty. It's a variety of things. And so if you were in the medical group, then you read the section in that article about medical reasons why kids refuse to eat. And then after, then they presented to the whole group about uh, what they learned. But I used index cards to divide them up initially. So here's a mid pause for two minutes. So compare notes with someone at your paper, at, at your table, sorry, and discuss one idea so far that we've talked about, or, or one idea that you feel like you could modify. Take two minutes, and, and then we'll uh, come back. Okay, raise your hand if you have the note card with the yellow sticker at your table. Okay, okay, I'm gonna roll my magic dice. If I happen to roll the table that matches your number, then, then you get to tell me what you talked about. So table two, who has, has the yellow sticker? So tell us what idea you like the most so far. Um, I like the true or, for, true or false, uh, nope cards because um, it's easy to uh, to know the the students uh, get knowledge and and um, and and the, the teachers know what what they don't know so far so yeah yeah it's a really quick feedback system all right here's we'll do one more uh, table one who has the yellow card at table one I choose, actually, I choose the same one, the first statement, um, especially the version one. So this kind of question was the most difficult part when I was in the graduate school. Uh, I always uh, struggle with details within the whole context. So uh, make some correction within the context and detail part. It's really, really important and really help a student to better understand the concept and deliver it to the meaning to other people. Awesome, thank you. 
All right. We're halfway done. Maybe we'll get done early and then you can go home early. That would be cool, huh? Here's another one. Um, review and reflect. So uh, in one of my classes, I, and this is partly due to the learning circle I was in, and I, I don't know if anyone attended that lecture earlier this morning, but um, I just added a standard question to the end of every lab assignment. And basically it said, uh, give me a summary of this week and uh, what what are you going to remember? What How has it impacted you? Uh, what worked? And, and it was just kind of an evaluation that made them reflect. And so also, if I, in class, I would sometimes randomly hand out index cards and I would ask them a question during class that they need to respond to to get them to reflect or think or just pause. And then sometimes I collect those cards, not always, uh, but ideas of, or examples of questions that I would ask is I would say, I'm gonna ask a question at the end of class that's related to this lecture, so be sure you listen up, take notes, because it's worth point or whatever. And another one is um, write a one minute summary of today's class on your little index card. Uh, one was two whys and two ways. So we were talking about uh, breastfeeding and the question was, give me two whys or two reasons why it's important to be a breastfeeding advocate for women who choose to breastfeed, and two ways that you can do that. Um, something you liked, appreciated, or, or learned today, a key take-home message for you, three major points or principles that we covered, and then something new that you didn't know before class. And then, um, you know, it's just a quick way for them to kind of process and download what, what you've talked about, and uh, works good. Uh, one that's kind of related to that is attendance, where uh, in, in one class I told him that uh, I was going to pick 10 random days during the semester to hand out an index card. And if they were there in class that day and responded to the question that I asked, then they get 10 bonus points or up to 10 bonus points at the end of the semester if they were there all 10 times. So here's an example where, you know, I would ask some sort of reflection question during class. They would turn in all their cards. I'd get a TA or someone to alphabetize them. And then they could get their extra attendance point. Um, okay, sort and match. So for this one, uh, there, there's two sets of cards. So in this particular example, the one set of card was um, conditions uh, related to breastfeeding, or it could be any other type of topic. And then the other set of cards was a description of the, that condition or topic. And so their job, uh, there, there's three versions for this. For one, for version one, uh, they got um, both sets of cards and their job was to match them up as a group. So uh, see, what one correctly described low milk supply and what one, what one correctly described mastitis. Kind of like a matching game, but they could see them all at once and put them together. Version two was that some students got, or well, around the room, I just had the topics displayed and every student came in and they would have um, a description card and then they were supposed to go stand uh, under the, the card around the room that was describing their condition. And then version three, there was um, every student got a card and they may have had one from set two and they may have had one from set one, but then they had to physically move around the room and find their match or someone that could match with them. And so there's a few ways to do that one. Uh, peer review, so in, in this class, the, uh, one of their assignments is a research paper, but they also have a few other writing assignments. And so uh, I decided to use a peer review approach more this time than I usually do. And so what I did is I had them bring a rough draft copy of their writing assignment. And then they were in groups of three. Everyone got three index cards and every group got 
or every person got uh, three stickers. And so their job was to put a sticker on each card and designate which person was the blue person, the red person, and the yellow person. If, if I was a red person, then my red sticker would go on my paper. And then I'd have a card that was blue and a card that was yellow. And then I would read the blue paper and the yellow paper and write feedback on their respective cards and then hand that my card back to the person who wrote the yellow paper and the blue paper so that they could have my feedback. And then I'd get my red cards from them so that they were giving me comments about my red paper, if that makes sense. Uh, so so I gave them like a little instruction page to tell them what to do, but uh, that was essentially the gist of it. And then the last one is something that I use just for me, because it's hard for me to remember from year to year or semester to semester what I was going to change or fix. And instead of, you know, putting it into a computer file or something, sometimes I just write it on a note card and stick it in, yeah, you know, the, a folder so that next year I remember, oh, I still need to get lancets for lab number 10 because we're low this year or something else. So it's just a little reminder card for me so that I don't have to remember so long for the next semester. Okay, so uh, we'll skip that one for time, but but I would like to hear from you, and we can do questions also. We have about seven and a half minutes about uh, other simple material strategies that, that you use or would recommend. So things like uh, with a post-it note or highlighter or low tech stuff, colored pencils, yeah. What are your thoughts or ideas or questions? Well, I'm in nursing and these are these are great and these kinds of ideas would really work for us. A couple that I do that are come right out of your playbook are um I I don't remember where I picked this up, but um you put a one on a card and then you know you're going through a presentation and then when you stop you hand the one to one person in a small group and say you're the leader lead your group now in a two-minute review of diabetic ketoacidosis, okay, right? And then next time we stop, the leader card gets passed to the next person. So that's, that's one thing that I've done. And then with the, um, the card ideas moving around the room, I've done that as a review with drugs in pharmacology where I had a f two facts about, say, ACE inhibitor, and you had to walk up to people and read your facts, and they had to tell you what you were, what drug you were. So, yeah. Thanks for sharing. Anyone else? Denise. So I use the index card with their registration photos on it, which sometimes are helpful and sometimes not. But I have them write their name and their uh, major or interest of, or a focus area of interest, um, what they like to do in their spare time. And then on the back of the card, I offer them a chance to tell me something that would help me be a better teacher for them as a learner. Um, and they don't have to answer that question. But maybe out of my 60 students, I might get five or six, and one will say, you know, I have a learning disability, or I have fatigue syndrome, and so if I put my head down, I'm not being, please know I'm not being rude, I just can't keep my head up anymore. So, and they tell me some things that are really helpful for me um, to adapt or, uh, you know, help them as a, become a better learner in my class. So they don't have to, but I got that from a Facebook post from, from a second grade teacher when she asked her little students the same thing. Anyone else have a comment? So one of the things I have tried with some of my classes, I have a lot of high schoolers concurrent, and we have a guest speaker or a lecture, they never will ask questions at the end. And the guest speaker just stands there and they just stand there and look. So I pass out index cards and tell them they need to write two scholarly questions during the lecture that they want to ask. And then I collect those cards and then I ask, the lecture, the questions. You know, some of them are repeats, so we skip them, but that seems to work with people who won't ask questions. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Anyone else? If you don't have a question, you just tell me I have five minutes. Okay. Maybe we're going to go home early today. That would be cool, huh? Okay, yeah. Um, so one, I think my assessment at the end, I teach, um, the MBA students 
And I think the assessment at the end is going to be compiling all of their ideas and writing about leadership into a book. And so I think the note cards for us will be just collecting tidbits and articles and quotes and, you know, sources and, and just an organizational system. Um, in, in addition to a lot of these, I see the, you know, the, the opportunity here. But I think for us, it'll just be a way to collect and gather and store information that they'll use at the end in group projects or something like that to, to build um, their kind of leadership manual as they go out and finish their MBA. I have a question for you, Marlene. I mean, do you laminate your index cards? I can imagine it's getting really grubby. Like, if you have 200 students, I mean, you have a lot of students, right, in a semester. Like, for, um, yeah, so, like, uh, usually I don't laminate them. Uh, some, I typically put, print on cardstock, but something like this where I'm gonna reuse them the following year, like the condition and post it around the room, then I might laminate that or put on cardstock or something and then just collect it afterwards. But usually I don't uh, spend a lot of time and effort if I can just reprint it. And also, um, I, I provided index cards for students rather than having them provide their own because they're a dollar for a hundred and feel like that's reasonable. So, plus, if a student didn't bring in an index card, then I have to provide one anyway. So, anyway, for me, that worked best to just provide them for them, but you could do it either way. Anyone else? Yeah. Have you ever tried anything that did not work and so that you would not recommend that we do? Top of my head, I can't because I try to block it from my memory. But, um, but yeah, there's always some fails or things. I'm like, oh, let's try this different next year or not at all. But yeah, and also, um, and there's always a range of, you know, student comments on evaluations. So, for example, on the on the reflection question that I had to answer from week to week, for the most part, students were were, uh, you know, gave favorable responses to that, but there was one student who really hated them and let me know at the end, and I thought, you should have come earlier in the semester and we could have changed that, but anyway. So, yeah, it, uh, off the top of my head, I can't think of one for sure, but if I do, uh, I'll let you know. Anyone else? You guys are a fun group. Thanks for being here, and uh, good luck this semester.